To close the last section of the paper, I look at the individual and how individuals interact with these sorts of schemes, voluntary offsets markets and emissions trading markets. What I'm concerned about here is the way in which these schemes affect human behaviour and how they promote certain types of behaviour. If you're concerned about greenhouse gases, you want to take direct action, there's a certain number of things you can do. You can control your own emissions in various ways. You could maybe create sinks like planting a tree. You can give up your car, ride a bicycle and so on. Or you can buy voluntary offsets. The motives then that underlie people's behavior are important. Why do people engage in different types of actions? And why do they undertake actions which we would like to promote or not do so? This means that there may be motivations such as environmental and social concern you need to take into account. Some people may do this, these actions because they just want to feel good. And then there's the concerns about doing the right thing. This all raises concerns which relate to markets and how markets operate and their interaction with people's psychology, the ethics we hold, and also the intrinsic motivation of individuals. So I'll look at these three things in turn. The psychology of voluntary offsets. What we see is that the voluntary offset market is a form of price discrimination. What it's trying to do is to target a particular group in society. If you think about it in these terms, the deep green don't fly, skeptics don't buy, and the moderately concerned are therefore those who are being targeted. It's a marketing approach to address the moderately concerned individual. There's no necessary link here at all to climate impact outcomes. What's going on here is that marketing is being undertaken to make people feel guilty and then to get them to assuage their guilt by, mar by, by buying these offsets. You get a warm glow out of it and you can promote your green image. I buy offsets when I fly. I'm a good person. There's a real problem here. How do we verify these offsets? How do we know what's going on with these offsets? How many people buy offsets when they go flying, tick the little box, pay their couple of dollars, and have an idea about what those offsets are doing? How many people know where that money is going? Where do you think it's going? Do you think it's going for carbon sequestration, planting trees in a sustainable way, or is it going into a bank account and earning interest for airlines? There's a real problem here because we're not dealing with a tangible good. When you go down to the supermarket and you buy a loaf of bread, you've got a loaf of bread in your hands. If you buy a carbon offset, you've got nothing in your hands. You can't verify what it is that you've bought. And then even if there was a real scheme out there and they show you and they say, look, we've planted these, this forest, it's a carbon offset, they can sell that 10 times, 100 times. Where's the verification process? The psychology of offsets also plays on the individual in another way. Because once people have engaged in an offsets market, what happens is that they purchase these offsets and then they defend them. People will defend offsets. I buy Qantas offsets. Qantas is an Australian national company. It has a good re reputation. It has trust and faith in society. Why should you criticize my offset purchase? Cognitive dissonance, that's cool. People ignore the facts, they don't want to engage with the arguments, and they defend schemes which they know are flawed. Overcompensation can also then result in people's behavior because they say, hey, look, I can buy offsets now, so I can fly twice as much as I did before. There's no real problem with, with greenhouse gases. Good intentions, therefore, may be led astray where powerful marketing based upon social psychology plays upon genuine concerns. I'm saying people do have genuine concerns here, but there's a game going on here of marketing these things to get people to buy them that is unrelated to the real issue. Then we get to the thing about ethics. Ethics coming in here. Are pollution offsets equivalent to medieval indulgences? Medieval indulgences were where you would undertake a harmful action and you would actually then buy these indulgences to compensate for it. So, you know, I'm the lord of the manor, I go over to a neighbouring area, do a bit of rape and pillage, come back, 
and say, oh, sorry, God, I'm going to pay uh, you know, for a choir to sing for me for 10 years, and then for everything to be okay. Of course, the market got more efficient, and then you could pay straight to the Pope, direct line to God. Pollution offsets have been equated to this. You undertake the pollution, a harmful act, and then you buy your offsets, and you don't have to change your behavior. Now, are they really the equivalent? The thing with greenhouse gases is, you could say, is it a morally wrongful act to emit greenhouse gases? The answer has to be no, because if we were in a world where the sinks and the sources were equated, and they were being taken up, if we had a different type of economy, a different structure of the economy, where we weren't fossil fuel dependent, and we weren't emitting, emitting so many gases, you could emit a certain amount, and it wouldn't have the impacts that we're so concerned about with climate change. So they're not morally wrong in and of, in of themselves. The interesting thing here, though, is the way that economists engage in moral issues, which they claim they don't, but they do, in their implicit moral theory, good and bad are equated. You do a harmful act, you can correct it by doing a good act. That's what cost-benefit is all about. That's what carbon offsets are all about. We're going to do something wrong over here, we know that's bad, and now we're going to do something good over here to compensate it. That is a highly dubious moral philosophy. The other issue here is who should undertake actions to control greenhouse gases? Should the people in less developed countries be doing that? So that people in the developed economies can continue running their economies as they already do? The poor sell cheaply. That's the reason, as I say, we have the offset market operating. It's because poor people will set up schemes at a very low cost because they have very little money anyway. There's no issue here of justice or fairness or equity. It's just not on the agenda. So what I say is good actions are not simply those which make the most profit or cost the least money. Finally, intrinsic motivation and crowding out. What we see in the offsets market is a concern here about crowding out intrinsic behavior. Intrinsic motivation is something which you can trace back a long way, but let's take Adam Smith, for example, because economists like to claim Adam Smith as the forefather of modern economics, even though it's Hume that should really be the one. In Smith's theory of moral sentiments, he discusses something called an impartial spectator as a new kind of moral theory, a theory based around virtue. That is, how should you run your life? Self-control being a very important element of that. People he sees as being intrinsically motivated to undertake good actions. Right? An intrinsic motivation which is affected by the types of institutions you have in society. If you have market institutions, you can crowd out desired behavior. An example, example real-world example from Switzerland, people turn up late to pick up their children from childcare. Right? A nursery says, right, we want people to come on time. So, because people are coming late, we'll charge them. The later they come, the more they pay. The behavioral outcome, you wanted it to change behavior so people came on time. The outcome was more people come late. And they come even later, because now they're paying. You changed it into a market transaction. You've set up a certain type of institution without even realizing what you've done. Now, Emissions trading schemes, are they like that? Are they more susceptible to crowding out than anything else? Well, taxes have also been cited as leading to crowding out. But because emissions trading schemes are such a heavy market institution, I think they are more susceptible. Basically, individuals, as I've argued, will cease voluntary actions. If the schemes are weak, giving weak incentives, overall reduction targets will be limited, which means that you can actually get an increase in net emissions from the scheme. So while it's not a problem that's unique to emissions trading schemes, I feel that markets create such strong incentives and they remove intrinsic motivations of trust, autonomy and social preferences. The appropriate institutional setting is not the market, but one of shared social responsibility.